Welcome to this video. I am Plumber Tom, and we're going to do a time lapse of a drainage waste and vent installation on a house. This one starts in the basement. Instead of below the basement, the sewer comes through the sidewall because it was too high to go below the slab. So we're going to hang all the pipe here. And there was a sewage ejector involved with this project. But the sewer comes in, and then we have to run the pipes out from there to all of the fixture locations. At this point, I'm bringing the three inch drains out to the bathroom group areas. To support the pipe, I'm installing plastic plumber's tape and I put a few out there just to get the pipe where it needs to go. Then I come back through and every four feet, I create supports along that pipe, making sure that it has the proper slope, quarter inch per foot. This installation is obviously PVC and I am generous with the primer and with the glue. Some plumbers may criticize that as getting sloppy and messy. To me, it is most important to have a solid joint. And if you talk to any manufacturer of PVC, they're gonna say you want a lot of primer and a lot of glue. And so that's what you're gonna see on the way that I install. Now there's different strategies for installing pipe. For me, I like to go through and install the main pipes that run to everything first. So I'm leaving Y's for branches. Once those trunk lines are in place, then I come back through and I run the branches out where they need to go. So at this point, I'm about at the end of the line. This is underneath the master bathroom, so I'm hooking up the toilet. I'm running a vent. There's a Y that's gonna go up through the middle between the toilet and the shower. And then I've got the shower right there. I'm hooking up the P-trap for the shower. Now while I'm in the basement, I'm gonna run a vent up. This is gonna be a future bathroom. This is an unfinished basement. But I'm gonna run the vent up and connect it into the venting system. So I'm leaving a place for the lavatory. I'm moving that vent through the walls so that I can get it up to a good location where it can connect in to the venting system above the drains in the next floor. Now that I have the main trunk line run, I'm going back through and running branches. These are two inch pipes that are being run for sinks on the next floor above. The pipe that I'm using is Schedule 40 DWV Cellular Core. Now Schedule 40 is, you know, your typical PVC pipe, but the Cellular Core is used specifically for drainage. It has more of a foam core in the wall. It's a little bit lighter weight and not made for pressure, but it is made for drainage waste and vent. That's the pipe I'm using. Here I'm still running those branches out in the basement. I had left a Y for the kitchen. It's gotta go all the way across the house, so I'm coming through the joists, supporting it every four feet with the plastic plumber's tape, as I did with the main trunk line, and making sure that it has proper slope. Now, if I can hang close to a duct, where I know they're gonna box the ceiling out, that's a great place for me to run pipes. So I'm kinda of bringing that through and then getting up in the joists, and that way they don't have to box out any more than really necessary when they frame in the basement. Now that I've finished the trunks and the branches in the basement, I move up to the main floor where I'm going to finish the drains going to different fixtures like sinks and run all of the vents up, tie those together and run them out the roof. So I'm going from one location to another. Now I'm mainly running vent pipes. Here's where I tie in that vent from below. I'm gonna bring it up above the flood level rim of the sink on the main floor connect it in with a Santee, and then get in the trusses and bring all those vents together. Now, you can run them straight out the roof, but then you have more roof penetrations. I feel it's a matter of professionalism to bring your vents together and minimize roof penetrations as you're creating venting systems. This is the washroom where I'm going to install a Santee, a P-trap, and a washer box, and I'll run the vent up from there. Don't forget to check out my other video detailing how you can do washer boxes. I'll give you all the heights and measurements that I typically will use when I'm installing those boxes. I'm gonna run that vent up and connect it together. This washroom also has a sink, a laundry sink on the other side of the room here. So I'm gonna run a vent up for each one of those and connect those vents together up in the trusses where they will also tie in to the other vents and run out the roof. Now I live and work in Utah. We are on the International Plumbing Code. So the venting systems that I'm installing are based on the International Plumbing Code. 
It gives a little more flexibility than requiring an individual vent for every fixture. Sometimes I use individual vents. Sometimes I'm using wet vents. Whenever you're installing vents, you want to make sure that you know the code for whatever jurisdiction you're in, and that is determined by state. Moving into the kitchen, the kitchen sink centers below that window, so I'm going to send an arm over to that. Just use a basic Santee. This is an individual vent. I'll stub it out for the kitchen sink and run a vent right out the roof. I like to stub my vents 14 inches above the roof. I like it a little higher than the minimum required by our jurisdiction just because we get snow pile up and I want to make sure those vents are up. So I'm going to cut a piece, send it up there and make sure it's 14 above the roof. This bathroom group was unique and challenging because the HVAC contractor put the return air right below that wall. I couldn't run pipes up into that wall. So I had to bring the lavatory drain up and around coming through the studs. This is far from ideal, but it works. I've got the drain coming through the wall, and then I put a vent in there with an arm that continues on. You can see it reduces from two inch to inch and a half to that arm to the sink on the far right. And then I run a vent up, and that's gonna go out the roof. Running vents through trusses is fairly forgiving. I like to use the structure that exists to create my grade. So I put a little piece of pipe that would raise that up quarter inch per foot as it goes and then make sure that it's supported every four feet through the trusses. I make sure to have adequate support at the bottom of that vertical pipe for the vent. It's gonna be holding the weight of that whole pipe going up. Let's have one more look from the basement going upstairs. I've got the main drains run through the trunk lines with branches coming off for fixtures wherever needed. And where possible, I keep it by the duct so they can just box out around and minimize intrusion in the basement ceiling. On this house, I'm hanging the drains because the sewer elevation coming into the house is higher than the basement level. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful to you. Please give me your comments. What do you think? How do you run drainage? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to have fun when you're out there installing drain waste and vent systems.